Hello, my name is Mike Reed. I'm with Brightview Senior Living, and I am the Executive Director for Brightview Wakefield, which is a senior living community under construction in right off downtown Wakefield. We'll be opening in January of 2018. We're very happy to be here today at the WCAT studios in Wakefield uh, to present a show. Um, this is an idea some of us had uh, uh, geared toward the senior population in the area. Senior population is growing, and we wanted to put a little show together that might talk about some topics that would be of interest to seniors uh, in the local area. So we're very happy to be here. I asked a panel of experts, a group of experts, to be here today, and they graciously accepted um, who we are going to go over a few topics uh, with us today. We have uh, Chris Barrett from Chris Barrett Realtors, a real estate agency in uh, Wakefield. We have Jeanette Sheehan from ABC Home Health, a home health company located right here in Wakefield. Uh, Victoria Johnson from Ameriprise Financial. Um, Ellen Sullivan from Home Transition Res Resource, a uh, home transition company that helps, helps lots of people. And uh, Charlie Barrett, who is with Senior Benefit Consulting. Um, excuse me, Charlie Balanoff, excuse me. Uh, Charlie Balanoff is with Senior Benefit Consulting. This is a group of people who uh, touch uh, seniors' lives from time to time and we thought might, uh, might have some interest in uh, what people want to hear out there. So thank you folks for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, I just started out with a very general topic and people can chime in as they like. What, what might be some of the top topics on seniors' minds these days? I think that what they really want to do is they want to have the same lifestyle that they've always had. And I also think that they want to live a long time and live healthy, but they don't plan ahead for either of these sometimes. So I think that's really what it is. They see what it is to live their life on TV, traveling, doing all these things, and then suddenly one of them becomes ill or they need some more care than they thought. And then they decide that they probably need to move or they need to go to an assisted living or they need to stay at home. I don't think that people plan ahead. That's what's on their mind. They think they're going to live a really good life like they see on TV, but they really need to plan on the fact that they're going to live 35 years, not the 65 year olders anymore. Our clients are 85 and 90. Well, I think one of the, the advantages of the right few senior living is, you know, your, your seniors maintain their independence. You know, the majority of the units at this um, facility are independent units. So your seniors, you know, have some, some guidance uh, from the staff, but they're independent. And from our arena uh, in move management, some have been in their home for 30, 40, 50 years, and they're so overwhelmed at the thought of having to move, where do I start, and what would the process look like? Mm. Not only that, but also um, affording health care and all the different choices with the supplements and which one do they pick and the prescription coverage and just really understanding how the different intricacies of it all works is pretty confusing, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. And I do think that they don't understand the insurance and the Medicare, and they don't understand the veterans' benefit. A lot of them are veterans, but they think, oh, I have a really good health care plan, but the health care plan only covers skilled care. And they don't care about, they don't find out about the long-term care. They need somebody um, to help them. If there's people that are at home getting care or people that are going into assisted living, and they are veterans of a war, the war, the war these days would be Korea, uh, World War II, Vietnam. There is a benefit that help that helps subsidize their payment for assisted living or home care costs, and it's called aid and attendance, and it's a monthly benefit that they can qualify for, that we can help them qualify for. For a veteran, it's as much as seventeen hundred and eighty dollars a month. Great. And a veter a spouse of a deceased veteran can get up upwards of eleven hundred and fifty a month. Sure. And if they're together at your assisted living, living there together, then the money is more, it's $2,120 a month. So exactly. that's something that every veteran is entitled to if they go to assisted living and they qualify financially and medically. Right. So I think what we're hitting on here is um, a couple of things from each of us. I mean, mo most of our seniors these days are looking to maintain that independence. Um, and we've also hit on another topic, uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, live the lifestyle they've always wanted to live. But also, I mean, obviously we all know people are living longer, so a financial piece comes in. 
I don't know if anyone can comment on this, um, you know, when back in the day when you used to be able to plan your retirement for maybe 15 years, you may be looking at having to plan your retirement for 30 or more years. Right. So um, there's, of course, no one knows exactly how long they're going to live, but there is a online calculator. There are lots of different life expectancy calculators online, but there's one that I've tried myself that is livingto100.com. There's all sorts of questions. It asks you about your health, your family history, your exercise habits, drinking, smoking, all of those things, and it spits out a number based on an algorithm where you can at least get some sort of idea on, okay, what should I be planning for? Because it allows you to think about your spending a little bit more carefully and how you're investing your money a little bit more carefully. Obviously, interest rates are very low, so you have to think a little bit harder about how you're going to get your money to work for you because the bank is just not going to give it to you. I think the planning, too, is very important if you involve your children and mm -hmm. while you're young and you're healthy and you plan ahead. I think that's really the most important thing. We all think 65, you know, we're going to retire, but that's when you should start your planning. That's when you should decide who's going to be a health care proxy, a power of attorney, if you're going to apply for insurance, um, long-term care insurance. I would even argue that you should be doing that a lot younger. A lot a younger. A lot younger. A like lot 50, younger. 55 Agreed. Is, is late a late start um, yep. thinking about long-term care insurance just based on how expensive it gets once you get older. Yep. I think talking about our seniors, they're thriving. And, mm -hmm. and you know, old is a lot um, younger than it used to be. And, you know, the, the location of this facility, right, you know, downtown Wakefield has access to so many wonderful Wakefield amenities. Um, you know, your independent seniors can, you know, still be part of the community, still, you know, downsize, downscale, and have access to, you know, oftentimes a community they wanted to stay in. Exactly. You know, that's, that's what we're finding, obviously, is that many of the local folks, you do want to stay in the town that, that, that you, grew, you know, you, you're from, that you lived in a long time. And so that, that's where, obviously, we're very excited about this location because um, it offers such access to some of the great things in the local area, like Winnipeg and the library and and different types of things. And this is kind of what we're leading to. It really does allow um, uh, seniors to maintain their independence as opposed to, I think, still many. And, and one thing that most many seniors you know, still don't quite, quite get is that we are definitely uh, a, lot, a lot of independent living, senior living. We're not nursing home by any means. So it's really uh, in, increasing your independence. Jeanette, you mentioned something about planning. And, I, and I'm going to guess most people don't want to talk about this, do they? They don't want to talk about putting together or a, whatever it is, maybe you could provide some insights on how people can do this and how, how important it is. Well, there is this book called Five Wishes, and I'm not really, um, people say that you should even do it at Thanksgiving when the whole family is there and you decide who you want for your power of attorney. But the most important thing is you decide what you want at the end of life or going that way. And it really is, it, it really talks about the family dynamics because what we find so often when family are in need, there's maybe five siblings, but there's only one that's in charge because nobody has really talked about it. So it's really good. I mean, this is a book that's available, five wishes for anybody who wants it. And then there's also access to 1-800-AGE-INFO um, on, on, um, on the web, and that tells you the language. I think language is really important. I don't know the difference between a carburetor and a battery, and I'm sure people here don't understand the difference between an assisted living and a nursing home or home care or what's Medicare, what's mass health, and yet we call it Medicaid. So there's that access, too. And people should start looking at 55 years of age so they're prepared. And I, I, um, I like that whole idea of planning um, because knowledge is power. And a lot of what we kind of percolate at home about, especially as seniors, is, the, is things that they've thought of, you know, in, in years past. And it's different now. You know, uh, Brightview uh, Wakefield is very much very homey, very beautifully appointed. You know, it's really almost a country club style and something you can be very proud to live in. Um, but being able to go out and stretch your mind a bit to be able to do some research and know what's out there will empower you to then continue that independence in making your own decisions at a time while you're independent, feeling good, uh, feeling healthy, uh, so that decisions you make your decisions and they're not being made for you. Right. And to expand upon that, the document issue, 
Um, we do see that every week. We meet with families, and there'll be three or four children, and they don't know where anything is mm -hmm. because, and their parents are in a rehab, and they're not sure if they're going to be going home. They're not sure if they're going to be going to assisted living or a nursing home at that point. And then when we start talking about financial issues, such as the veterans benefit, or are you going to be looking at going to a nursing home and looking at mass health, they don't even know where the documents are that mm -hmm. their parents did prepare. So it's very important for seniors to bring their family into the mix because it's just it can be chaos at yeah. the meeting. That's well, right. Plus, the, um, their financial advisor can help. You know, if you meet with the financial advisor or professional, the adult children can help explain concepts that are confusing or they're there to remember. If you That's involve cool. the kids in the mm -hmm. process, yeah. they remember what the professional said and they start having a relationship. and and able to help once the you know their parents aren't maybe have an issue and aren't doing so well it's a lot easier for the children i think to you know deal with mom and dad's finances and help them if they've been in touch with all these professionals right. for and years it's important to make sure you're seeking out the right professional also sure. because there are financial advisors but they're not all experts at mm -hmm senior issues absolutely so it's important to, important. it's important and it's also mm -hmm. important to seek out the right attorney if you're an elder and you're looking for elder law you want to go to the you know massachusetts association you know the nail site national association of elder law attorneys and you want to find an attorney from there that works specifically in that area and you know there are several in this area so mm -hmm. that's important too it's all it's all about transitions you're transitioning your finances you're transitioning your homestead you're transitioning a lot of things and you know and you'll help someone transition to brightview um but one of the great things about brightview is you can transition there once you know one of the you know age in place things so you can transition there's also security to for your for the children of their parents, knowing that they can transition once. You know, you can go to an independent living unit at Brightview, mm. and then as your lifestyle changes, you can go to an assisted level unit. There's a lot of great things, and you know, transitions are always difficult in, in any aspect, financial, you know, physical, and Brightview helps you handle those transitions a little easier. We appreciate that. One of the, I think what we're hitting on here really clearly is planning. I mean, there's, you, you cannot almost plan enough. And while these, as we were talking about, I mean, these, are t these, are, these are touchy issues for families. I mean, we're talking about, you know, later in life and, and some, some difficult things, but planning is absolutely key. All this said, and I'll key in maybe a little bit on Chris and, and Ellen here, I mean, this is not easy for seniors. Uh, you've lived in your house 40, 50 years in some cases. Uh, you've amassed uh, a lot of memories. It's not just a home for you, uh, not a house for you. Um, you've got lots of co collections over the years. Uh, it's kind of a leading question uh, for Chris, but I'm assuming that you know most seniors' biggest asset is their home. It absolutely is. And there's so many aspects to, you know, transition that, uh, you know, you're going to downscale, you're going to look at the financial aspects, how you want to invest that money, how you want to handle that money, uh, how to plan for a, a stay in, in a facility like Brightview. You know, and, and it's funny, in this era right now, you're going to maximize your home sale value. You know, property is worth more than it's ever been. And, you know, in the right hands, you can help someone maximize what their values are on some of that stuff. But, you know, it's it's a great time to transition into something like this. Right. I would think with the way the real estate market is. And, Ellen, you've got your company has a lot of experience with this. And you, you've right. it's, it's important to have someone help you out a little bit, I would imagine. It is. And, you know, Christopher, when you're talking about, um, you know, downsizing and, you know, getting to a, a smaller but smarter place, um, a lot of times our clients are so worried about what they aren't taking with them. Uh, you know, people just say, well, it's just stuff. Well, you know, their stuff is their lives, and it's really important. And so it's, it's as important to find valuable spots, whether it's with family members, whether it's selling items to, uh, you know, a collector or dealer, antique dealer, um, or donating them to a charity. But finding a second life for these items is very rewarding. And, and you know, ultimately, something like donation can be, um, you know, a, a great thing. Absolutely. I think one of the things that you're bringing out is respect. Yes. And I think that if people respect the person's choice, they may decide to go to assisted living, or they may decide to stay at home. And we do home care. So if the siblings respect 
what the parents want. If the siblings respect that they only want one or two hours and then they figure out, oh, they can't do this, maybe I'll go see an assisted living or maybe I'll you know, stay home. But if they respect them, if they start slowly and, and really give them decision making so many times when they're doing financial planning or they, they just decide, oh, mom and pop don't know where their papers are, they really do. It's all about respect, respect for what the senior wants, whatever it is. Treat them as an adult and respect them. Well, that goes in line with involving the children when they're, you know, before it's necessary so that they can get involved and understand the whole situation mm -hmm. and it's more of a team decision versus, uh oh, mom or dad needs help, we're going to take over. Right, exactly. And that's one of the items I think we've been discussing is, you know, as a senior, you, you, it's hard to do this alone. Uh, I mean, many times you think you can, whether you're by yourself, whether it's a husband and wife, spouse situation. So I don't know from our pers your perspective, what are ways that families can get involved or what are, again, I just know with our experience, it is a touchy item. Um, and, and there can be a lot of push and pull and back and forth. So I don't know if anyone has any ideas of how adult children or family members or friends can get involved. Well, I think, again, that people get involved when they show respect and they start planning early. And if you talk to mom and dad or mom about dad or dad about moms, because they all have different opinions. And sometimes the leader of the group has to understand we all have different opinions. And if they have a family meeting, but that's ideal. That's not what happens. Everybody waits until it's too late. They need to do the planning. And they really need to, if, if the family thinks, I'm not going to be there to help them out at home, even though the, they may want to stay home, people want to stay home. They have to understand that an assisted living can be their home. Mm -hmm. So home just changes, and they don't have to go to a nursing home. Everyone thinks, when I get really sick, I'm going to have, but you could pay nine to $12,000 in a nursing home, mm -hmm. even within those first 100 days. A lot of people think first 100 days, I'm going to live, you know, at the 100 days there, and after 20 days, you're paying 20%. So you really need to plan, and you need to get, how do you get the kids involved? Visit, visit, visit. Yeah. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Ellen. Uh, I can speak to this, you know, personally. My parents are, are we're doing this this very um, thing is just again researching, and just allowing them to gain information. Um, but when it, w with regards to the adult children, you hit it right on the head, Jeanette. Adult children have got to respect the process for their their parents. This is their move, their decision, um, and as you said, they're they're perfectly capable in most instances to make their own decisions. You don't want to take that power away. You don't want to take the power away right. because so much is being lost in right. these later portions of their lives. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I wholeheartedly agree, and I think we're all saying that, is respecting that process, allowing mm -hmm. them to make the decision, being there for them as a support. Right. Seniors in this day and age th are thriving. Yes. They're independent. And I mean, that, that's what I keep going back to about why I like, you know, Brightview Senior Living is because you have that independence. You have your own independent unit. This is an independent facility. The majority of the units are independent. And so your, your seniors are transitioning out of some, some stuff that might be difficult for them to handle, but they're still maintaining independence. You know, you... To get into this, you've got to, you know, manage your financial stuff. You're going to manage the real estate piece. You're going to manage the, the benefits. But you're still going to be independent. That's but why I've I like seen this. live so long. Yeah. That, that's, you know, if the seniors plan ahead, like you said, plan early. They're seniors. And then you get to the elderly, which is 85, 95. Somebody falls. So if they've planned ahead, then they call that home. That's right. As soon as, you know, if we could say anything here, it would be plan. That's right. I think one of the things we're hitting on, and, and I was just, one of the next topics was going to be what, what are some of the pitfalls that, you know, we see seniors run into. And I think we can all agree, if you get to a crisis situation, it's going to be a very difficult, very difficult time for everybody. We've all heard plan for the worst. 
hope for the best. Right. <laughs> That's not going to happen to me. Is their attitude? <laughs> yeah. So I, I just would open it. You know, I'd open. I mean, any other. I mean, obviously planning, and and that's where you do. I mean, if you wait, that's what obviously what all of us are trying to convince the senior, talk to the senior population. You don't want to think about it, but do it before you have to. I, I think is whether it's a move, whether it's getting home health in the, whether it's doing this planning, do it before you have to. And I don't know. Are there any other you know those type of pitfalls that, that we see some folks run into? One of the biggest things that you also see is that you see one spouse taking care of the other spouse. Okay, and that happens a lot, yeah, and that can mm -hmm. happen for, th I've, we've met with people where they say, I've been taking care of my spouse now with Alzheimer's or dementia for three or four years now, and they don't even understand the toll that that took on them. So now you have one spouse that's going into a nursing home, and that takes a toll on the other spouse, and then soon after that, mm -hmm. the other spouse is, is going to be sick because they didn't take the time to get that help, that home care that we always say, look, if you could just get somebody in there for a few hours a week and take a break, it's going to help your health. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing as the insurances have changed. People think, oh, I have the best insurance there is. Well, insurances don't cover the things that happen at the assisted livings or the things that can happen with one of the ASAPs, which is Mystic Valley in Wakefield. You know, they can provide some home health care that's really what most people need someone to do the adls the personal care they can get that at an assisted living like brightview or they can get it at home but so many of them think i don't need the help i'm going to take care of my mom or i'm going to take care of my wife and guess who gets sick the caregiver that's the older generation yeah. you know world war ii i'll do it myself generation that were born in the 20s right. they want to do everything themselves that's right. and now we're starting to see some of the the later generations that were maybe in their late 70s early 80s starting to come around because of all of these you know all of the things they can hear now public yeah. on you know they can just yeah. find out what's available to them a lot easier yeah. And I think it's important, like you were saying, the seniors. Seniors start so young. Mm -hmm. You know, when you turn 50, AARP is sending you a package <laughs> now. That's right. And, you know, due to this longevity, for the first time ever, we have two generations yes. downsizing. Right. So as you have um, uh, the older adults who are looking to pass on their furniture and belongings to their family, well, they're downsizing themselves, so they don't want to take anything on. Uh, so that, I think, you know, in terms of managing expectations as you're moving towards, um, you know, possibly downsizing yourself is just understand that, you know, uh, we can certainly help to disperse of those, those items uh, because it's very difficult when someone says, I'm just so frustrated, my kids don't want any of my things. Well, and It's funny, a generation ago, elderly was 70. It's now 90. I mean, I feel like in this day and age, 70, you're just getting warmed up. Oh, you are. <laughs> and some of them have part-time jobs, you know. They're, they've decided they want to do something different. And, and, and you're not downsizing, as you just said, till you're 90. And now you've got, you know, children that are 65 or 70 looking at, I don't want this stuff exactly. anymore. Because I'm thinking the same thoughts. <laughs> it's, uh, I was going to segue, you know, we could talk about, I mean, I have this topic on our list of uh, governmental changes. As everyone knows, we, if we get into government, we could talk, we could have a show for a year on that and government changes. But from a senior's perspective, um, any particular governmental changes, that kind of thing? I mean, I know we've been talking about Medicaid, Medicare, obviously there's Social Security. Any, anybody know of anything that... that that is changing. I know there's some things with veterans benefits that are in the works. Because of budget cuts, we, we are going to see changes in the Medicaid laws. We're already seeing those. Mm -hmm. um, the government always wants to make changes so that not as many people can get on Medicaid that ordinarily would be able to. And the veterans benefit that's being provided now to veterans when they go to assisted living or they're at home, that's being looked at because there have been there are veterans that um, are able to um, do some financial planning to divest themselves of an asset or do planning that would allow them to get these benefits. So the government is looking into that, and they'd like to they'd like to institute look back statutes like they have with Medicaid, right. where you can't yeah. give away all your money and then apply for a benefit. So they're looking at these things all the time, and wh whether they do them or not, we're not sure yet, but they are looking at it. And, they, and I think they're trying to get everyone on to manage care. And the other thing that we haven't talked about is the pool of workers to take care of the elderly and the pool of workers that are contributing to Medicare. 
you know, we're like an upside down triangle now. The elderly are all up here and the young people are down here. So the government has really looked at the fact that there's not that much money coming into the Medicare program. And then the pool of, they don't continue to, and, and you will find this even in the assisted livings or anywhere, it, it's a very tough job. So there's not a lot of workers to take care of all the elderly that are coming in. And unless the government, you know, increases the rates that they pay to these people, they probably, it's going to continue. Mm -hmm. That's a real problem in every setting for the elderly. Mm -hmm. And that's why they rely more and more on their families. Even in Medicare, if you go in, it's a skilled visit, you have to teach the 90-year-old husband how to empty the tube. Well, that's okay if that person has vision, but the government really needs to do more about providing the types of services that really keep a person safe, not so much the skill level, and they, they have not done that. As you know, in assisted living, that's the type of service they really need. Exactly. They don't need the skill as much as they need someone to do their laundry, make their meals, and have a great time in, in, uh, in you know, entertainment and exercise. Yeah, so I, I think and involvement, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, sociability, basically, and that's so important because if you stay, you know, without that, yeah, yeah. You know, we've been talking somewhat about you know, obviously people living longer and um, and, and financial. We've been talking about that. That's definitely a factor. Vicki, your organization still does long-term care insurance, and yeah. I just be, I think people would be interested. Mm -hmm. Is it does it still make sense if you're older? Does it make sense to get it? Uh, uh, those kind of things. Well, obviously, it depends on someone's specific situation, but it's you know, it's getting more expensive because you know the care is getting more expensive, and the laws have changed, outlining you know even older policies how they they have to pay out so you know they're kind of overriding what was written in the contract and saying no 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 this person paid for this you have to cover assisted living and so the you know they're just a lot more expensive than they used to be so you know if people qualify for it and they have the cash flow mm -hmm. you know based on how expensive long term care is getting it makes sense to at least investigate it and see if it's a good fit because long-term so, care will pay for assisted living, housing, will pay for home yeah. health, will yeah. cover that. Yeah, it depends on the policy that you get. And, you know, there's a monthly or daily benefit, annual premium. And so it just makes sense to, while you're young, this goes with planning ahead, while you're young, you should look into this at least to see if it's a good fit for your situation. Talk with your financial advisor, your financial professionals, and see if it makes sense for you. Um, and also to, you know, if it doesn't make sense for you, then maybe you need to start talking with some sort of elder care attorneys to move some assets around so that you're not, if you want to leave a legacy to your children, you have enough time to do that in advance. Good. Um, uh, you know, we've talked a lot. Um, uh, you know, people have been talking about, I think, you know, planning, advice. Uh, obviously, present company, we want you to know, we're going to let you know how to get a hold of present company uh, who is here uh, at the end of this show if you, you need more advice. But what are, what, what are, how do seniors go about getting this advice? We've talked about a lot of things, and as, as we pointed out, it's complicated. It's not easy, and things are changing. Uh, anyone best ideas on how to go out and seek? I mean, you've talked you talk different things, but where do, we, where do we go to get the best advice? Well, I, I mentioned before, 1-800-AGE-INFO is a website that says everything. It tells what the veteran is, what long-term care insurance is, transitioning, um, selling a house, and what is an assisted living, what is you know a retirement home, and the fact that Brightview can go from one to another. Those are important. It says all the language. It's like a, a glossary. And language is so important if you want to understand, but that's a great one. And Mystic Valley Elder Services is another one in this area that will help you. So they have a whole list of, you know, assisted livings, home cares, all of that. Um, they're, they're really great. So, and I'm sure all of us have web pages. So um, I just want to make sure to say that if you are hiring a financial professional, you want to make sure they're a fiduciary. You want them to have their Series 66 or their 63 and 65 combination licenses because that means they have to advise you within your best interest, and they they can't make they can't make recommendations for you that are not you know only for your best interest. So that's a very important thing to do. Mm -hmm. And as a move manager, we are in, uh, on, in a na belong to a national association, which is the National Association of Senior Move Managers. They have a website, and there's a lot of great information there. 
aside from ours as well. Good. And as a home care agency, you want to make sure that it's one that's run by a nurse, right. always a nursing, not just I bought a franchise that could buy a Dunkin' Donuts or I could buy a home care. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll go to location, um, and I just love the location of Brightview. Great. So it's all it's what I think a lot of that benefit is. Yeah, we certainly we certainly look forward to being a great part of the town, um, but also on this, uh, you know, with senior, we find that with, I think you all do too, with senior population growing, um, and with people living longer, there are more people specifically getting into the senior living industry. I think we would all agree, you know, attorneys now, and, and I think that's what you're saying is that folks are getting designation, obtaining, and it takes some studying to do obtaining information on specifically, and you were alluding to that, the senior your living population. And it certainly helps, you know, if you're a senior to, uh, you know, not just an attorney, but an attorney who is, who has been accredited or a financial planner or a mover or home health, you know, obviously home health mostly involved with the senior living population, but who has gotten this accreditation. Well, uh, I think we've come to the end of our time. I want to thank everybody for coming today. Uh, I hope this was, we hope this was informational for you. We hope you found it interesting. Um, if you would like more information on any of the folks that, that, that talked here today, that were involved here today, please call the WCAT uh, studios. They'll be happy to give the information. Or Brightview Wakefield, we do have a sales office located on Princess Street in, in, uh, in Wakefield, 781-486-4422, 781-486-4422. And we'd be happy to give you the contact information for the people that were here on the panel or any other information. So I just want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank, thank you, you for taking the time. and. Uh, Again, hopefully you found it interesting. Thank you and have a good day.